the markets at this hour, as I said, now pricing in not just a 100 percent probability of an at least 75 basis point hike at the Fed meeting next week, but now 24 percent of the market is betting on a 100 basis point tightening. So as the markets tank, we have team Fox Business coverage. Joining me now for the floor show, Northwestern Mutual Wealth Management CIO Brent Schutte with $237 billion in assets under management. He believes the market has put in a bottom. Euro-Pacific Capital Chief Economist and Global Strategist Peter Schiff is probably shaking his head, I can only imagine. Uh, I want to start with you, Peter. What does this mean for the Fed? What's the Fed's next move next week as it begins its two-day meeting on September 20th? Well, the Fed is going to hike rates. I doubt they'll go 100 basis points. But even if they did, it would not matter. You know, I don't understand why markets are still surprised when you get higher than expected inflation numbers. Inflation is going to continue to get stronger even as the economy gets weaker. And in fact, the Fed actually falls further behind the inflation curve every time it hikes rates because these rate hikes are too little too late. The Fed needs to make interest rates positive to do anything to bend the curve. They have to get rates above the rate of inflation. And until they do that, they're spitting in the wind. And meanwhile, what really has to happen is we need massive cuts in government spending. And the government is doing the opposite. We had the, the Inflation Reduction Act. We had the, the CHIPS Act. We have forgiving student loans. All of this is additional spending, which is the worst thing you want to do when you have an inflation mm -hmm. problem. Well, uh, Brett, we're looking at a Dow loss here now of nearly two, uh, what, let's see, 1,100 points. We're at 1,087 to the downside here. Uh, you believe that uh, the lows are in for the markets. How can that be if we may very well see a 1%, although Peter doesn't agree, uh, hike in rates next week? Well, I don't think you're going to see 1% hike in rates. I agree with Peter on that front, that you'll see 75 basis points. Look, the reason why the market's down so much is all the forward-looking data continues to point to lower inflation. And so that's where the big surprise has been, is that this backward-looking inflation data is still higher. One of the biggest components of that was shelter, which has a 12- to 16-month lag with home prices. And so you're now seeing the impact of home prices last year show up in the data. I ask you where you think home prices are going in the future. You have seen the housing market go from absolute boom to bust, and you'll see prices decline, which will bring down inflation. If I take you back to the 60s, 70s, and 80s, when CPI peaked, the market bottomed. I don't believe this time will be any different, and there's a technical setup, too, that supports my conclusions. I think the market is going to be back and forth based upon every single trading data like this point, which is a one-month data point. Uh, but I do think the bottoms are in, and you're going to push higher, not until uh, 2023, but you will see new highs then. All right. We got two of you here. Both of you are buyers and sellers, okay. I would imagine. And what are you doing right now, Peter? Are you buying anything on a day like this where, depending on what you like, things are a lot less expensive? Well, first of all, it, it is possible that the market will bottom when inflation peaks. Unfortunately, we're years and years away from a peak of inflation. This is not 1980. It's more like 1970. This is just getting started. Okay, it's but not what are you buying a then? Finishing. So, well, I'm buying the same stuff I've been buying for a decade, preparing for this inflation. It didn't just start now. You know, the Fed sold the nation's soul to the inflation devil uh, back in 2008 when it did QE. And so now the devil is back to collect. Uh, but I'm, I'm prepared. I've been buying foreign stocks. I'm buying resources, commodities, uh, gold, gold uh, mining down. stocks, can I just, all the things uh, that are going to shine. Can we bring up a chart here, folks? Uh, we are looking at gold at the moment down about one and a third percent to uh, it's about a loss of 23 bucks to 1,713, uh, 26 bucks, actually. Uh, and, and let me then shift it over to Brett for the moment. Are you buying on a day like this, or do you wait till the dust settles? No, we're, we're fairly happy with how we're positioned. So we have owned commodities. We've owned tips in the past. And so we did think this inflation was coming based upon what happened during COVID, and as Peter mentions, in the prior years. Mm -hmm. I just think a lot of what's happening right now is the aftershocks or the after effects of the giant shift in the economy that you saw from services to goods and it moving back towards some sort of normal. Then and so um, we do still own those, but we want to continue to position in things that are cheaper. So Peter mentioned foreign stocks. I don't disagree there. And we like U.S. small caps, as represented by the S&P 600, which traded 11 times uh, 2022 earnings, which may be discounted, but still that gives you margin of safety versus their normal 
um, more, you know, 18 to 20 valuation. Hmm. You know, we're looking at session lows for the NASDAQ here, down about 562 points. The Russell getting clocked as well, down 3.6%. Uh, Peter, speak to our investor audience before we go here. What is your best piece of advice at the moment? <laughs> Yeah, well, first of all, you know, you mentioned that gold is down. And the reason that it's down is because investors still don't understand that the Fed is going to lose this fight with inflation, that the economy is not only already in a recession, but headed towards another financial crisis. And so the Fed, despite rising inflation, is ultimately going to try to stimulate the economy. And so we're going to have the combination of a massive recession or depression with a financial crisis and rising inflation. So all of this is bullish for gold. It's bearish for the dollar. So my advice is to your viewers is to tune out all the noise about how, how the Fed is going to succeed and how it's going to bring inflation back down to 2%. And you better invest as if the Fed is going to fail, not succeed. This is not 1980. Uh, Powell is not Paul Volcker. You've got to do the opposite of what worked during the 1980s. You've got to do what worked in the 70s, and that is getting out of U.S. stocks, getting out of U.S. bonds, and getting into commodities, foreign assets, and gold. Uh, I feel so much better now. Uh, <laughs> not Peter Brent. Glad I can help. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. All right.